a lot of her jokes are centered around disability and around her disability in particular, which is cerebral palsy. She does that in a way. The thing that really stood out to me in the hour that I got to spend listening to her on Sunday was how much power she got to take through her comedy and through talking about disability and even bringing up a lot of the narratives or the bias that people have around disability but in a way that is ultimately still uplifting and celebrating who she is as a person. Welcome to Chez Jeunesse, the place of new beginnings. My name is Katherine Hubert, and I founded and own a French-inspired cafe where, as a team, we are on a mission to change the way that our world understands neurodiversity and employs humans with disabilities. Our restaurant was born and is based in Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where we practice and teach our mission and model. This is our channel where we dive in deep to who we are, what we do, and why we do it. Our hope is that this content is empowering to disabled and non-disabled humans alike, and that no matter what perspective you are coming from, employer, employee, parent, friend, or Shazeness fan, you feel welcomed, you learn something new, and you walk away with a deeper appreciation and understanding of humanity. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. My name is Catherine. I am a disability integration coach, which is a title that I'm trying on today, even though we haven't really talked about it on this channel yet, but we will be. So stay tuned for that in a couple of weeks. We'll be breaking down what that actually means and why I've started calling myself that. But today we are gonna be talking about disability in comedy in ways that empowers and reinforces positive narratives around disability instead of negative. So we'll come up with something a little catchier than that for the title, but that's the gist of it. This has been prompted by a comedy show that I went to over the weekend with Annette. Annette and I drove to Raleigh, which is about an hour or so from Greensboro. It's also the capital of North Carolina, if you're not from North Carolina, or if you are like me and didn't really learn geography that well <laughs> in school. Drove to Raleigh and went to the Good Nights Comedy Club and saw Tina Frimmel, who is someone that I have been following on Instagram for maybe a year and a half or so now. She's a disabled comedian. I really like her content. I really like her and it was great to see her in person. So wanted to kind of one shout her out. If you don't already follow her, I recommend that you do. We'll link that down in the notes below. Her account's down in the notes below. But also just wanted to talk through some of the ways that the show impacted me. Coming off the heels of I know I've commented on a couple different comedians here in ways that I thought disability was not handled well, which a lot of times has led to, I don't know if a lot of times, I've gotten the comment that it's a problem to try to exclude disability from comedy, and I absolutely agree with that. That is not my intention. I don't want disability to be excluded from comedy. I want it to be included, but in part of inclusion is doing that in a way that actually brings someone into the community, into the environment, into whatever, whatever it is the circle instead of still othering or pushing someone out, making them smaller, etc., which is a lot of what I have seen in comedy. So include, but include it in a way where inclusion is actually at the forefront instead of othering or exclusion. So that's kind of the, the caveat there. I think there's also a difference in a disabled comedian talking about disability versus a non-disabled comedian talking about disability. There's a difference in what kind of content can happen and what that looks like. And so just want to talk about from my perspective and what stood out to me the most at this show. I will also <laughs> include in this video that I am in a little bit of a weird headspace today. It's been a good day, but kind of a like all over the place. I've jumped back and forth between a lot of different activities and I've also been working on my like end of life documents today, which I'm recognizing now that I'm sitting down has put me in a weird headspace, which makes sense. It's kind of like a, it's a big thing to have to think about. So who knows what this is gonna be like today. You guys might be really in for an adventure. That being said, we're gonna dive in. I'm gonna show a couple clips that I really, really like or that I want to talk about from Tina and then just talk about like the overall impact that the show made on me. So the first clip that I want to show and talk about is this one right here. Disabled, uh, you're right. <laughs> you're going to be okay, okay? <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> Don't lock the doors. 
everything I do is my inspiration, you know? I can't, I can't lose this. <laughs> So, so much. This is something I've seen this clip repeatedly throughout her social media So I do think that it's something that she includes in most of her sets It's something that she also included in the show that I went to on Sunday So I already was aware of these jokes, but I want to talk about them for two different reasons One this was at the beginning of her show that I went to see on Sunday So she starts it out like right out the gate addressing probably a feeling or a bias that most people consciously aren't aware of, which is that there's some kind of anxiety or nervousness around humans with disabilities. Sometimes people don't know what to expect or what to say or how to act. And so that can provide or produce some kind of social anxiety for the non-disabled person. I think it's very disarming and very welcoming to just put that out at the very beginning, like you're going to be okay. And you can hear, and this was the same case in Sunday, like there was a lot of energy and enthusiasm that was met, that the crowd met that with. And that's where I think comedy can be such a powerful way to break tension and to actually draw people in. And I think she does this right off the bat by addressing something that other people might not even know that was there, but then once it's stated, that just allows like this relaxation and you know that like there's a, a relatability and a connection that happens just from the get-go. The second part of that is the clip where she talks about everything she does being an inspiration. So I'm gonna clip that again in here just so you remember it. I do inspiration, you know? I can't, I can't lose this. <laughs> But this is something we've talked about on this channel before. It won't be the last time that we talk about it. The bias that, well, bias and also in a lot of marketing and media, you will see disabled humans being used for inspiration or to inspire non-disabled humans. I liked the way, again, she's, she's poking fun at a bias that's really real and that's something that she most likely has encountered throughout her lifetime and she's stating it in a way that pokes fun at the bias and not at herself and allows us as the audience to see the kind of the ridiculousness of that bias and to see in a very like simple construct why that doesn't make sense or why that could be actually insulting to a person with a disability again I think her comedy in general, a lot of her jokes are centered around disability and around her disability in particular, which is cerebral palsy. She does that in a way, the thing that really stood out to me in the hour that I got to spend listening to her on Sunday was how much power she got to take through her comedy and through talking about disability and even bringing up a lot of the narratives or the bias that people have around disability but in a way that is ultimately still uplifting and celebrating who she is as a person. And I think like I just walked away being like, wow, what an amazing way for her to reclaim her own rights and identity and power and to do that in a way that other people are able to like enter into and engage with with a lot of humor. And there's like a bond that happens, I think, when you laugh together with another person. So that was really neat to be part of that experience. Shajan has teammates, your keyword for this week is chamomile. Best of luck spelling it. And then the other clip that I wanna show, and I'm, I'm showing this one. One, I do think that it's funny, but two, there was a lot of education that came out of it. We're gonna show the clip and then I'll talk about it. When I was a kid, I had nothing on TV like me. Nothing, like I had like Drake. Drake! <laughs> okay. No. Oh. No. I, uh. Yeah. I love that reference. It only divides the room. There. Okay. If you don't get that joke, it's okay. Uh, I'll, I'll explain because it's a good joke, okay? I'm on here for a reason. 
Okay. So. So, okay, back, back when I was the camp, it was this channel on TV called Teen Nick, right, which was Nickelodeon, but for eight-year-olds <laughs> with their parents in the other room, right, <laughs> getting divorced, right? <laughs> Teen Nick, <laughs> Teen Nick rocked, okay? There was kissing, and people would die on that. That didn't happen on SpongeBob. Yeah. Powerful. <laughs> and on that channel, there was a show called Degrassi. Okay. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. And on Degrassi, there was a kid in a wheelchair. One kid, one chair. <laughs> and that was Drake, <laughs> the rapper. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So naturally, I thought I would grow up to become like a rap mo mogul. <laughs> I, I it didn't, but uh, it's okay. <laughs> I'll be fine. Ultimately, being born disabled turned out to be the best decision I ever made. This was on, she was on the Jimmy Fallon show. She also works at Comedy Central in New York City, has worked there since last summer. But the Jimmy Fallon show, she talked about this particular moment in the show that I went to on Sunday because she said the same joke and nobody, almost nobody in the crowd understood the reference to Drake. And so she also broke it down and explained it. And then she talked about how she made this joke on Jimmy Fallon and she's like, nobody there understood this joke except for Jimmy Fallon. She was like, his studio audience isn't really a stand-up audience. So a lot of what I was saying was kind of going over their heads. But she talked about how, like this, this kind of goes into disability representation on TV, in music, in art, etc. In this case in particular on TV, the people that you see. This is still a really big thing in media today. A lot, we're starting to see more disabled actors playing disabled characters on TV as opposed to non-disabled actors playing disabled characters. That still doesn't happen all of the time. So that's a conversation that we can get into at another time. But this one in particular, her pointing out, like when she was saying that this character, the, there was one student, one disabled character on this show in a wheelchair, it was played by Drake. And then she talked about in our show how <laughs> she was like, he will deny. <laughs> that that's a thing, that that was a role that he played at some point. And I was like, is this actually for real? So I Googled it and it is, like I found pictures, we'll put a couple of them here. I don't think she was speaking about it in, in a negative term, like that it was a bad thing that he was playing that role. I do think that there's more to that conversation about how often non-disabled actors or humans play disabled characters on TV. It's just kind of this weird niche, again, like it's something that's very specific to her experience that not a lot of people are gonna understand and that's something that I really enjoyed, like getting invited into this inside joke and understanding a piece of culture and what that experience meant to someone. And I like I never I don't know when or how I would have been exposed to that if that hadn't been part of her show and if I hadn't been there. And that's one of the things that is most valuable to me in terms of really pushing towards disability integration in the workplace and in the world. It's not it's not a disabled person's job to teach a disabled a non it's not a disabled person's job to teach a non-disabled person anything about disability and disability culture unless that's something that they want to do. But the opportunity to just learn through proximity and hearing other people's stories, experiences, likes, dislikes, the things that they grew up with, the things that they didn't, all of that, like a lot of the things that you just get to know about a person by getting to know a person is so interesting and informative and has really broadened like my eyes and perspective. And that's something that I'm really grateful for. All in all, the show was super fun. Comedy Club was also really fun, so I wanna go back. But look up Tina Fermolt. She's touring right now, so she's coming to a bunch of different places. If she's near you, I think it's a show that you would really enjoy. Definitely follow her online. It's a great example of just comedy in general, and I wanna preface that. This is not a lower category of comedy. She's a comedian. She's a comedian who happens to have a disability and incorporates disability into her comedy. However, as a comedian, she's excellent.
Her timing is wonderful. Her jokes are really well written. She understands and plays off of the energy of her audience very well. It was a delightful experience. She's also just very charming and charismatic, so it was fun to just be in her presence. And I have a lot of respect, despite what some people on the internet might think. I have a lot of respect for stand-ups and for comedians. I, I have this still like distinct memory of being, I like that I say distinct and then I can't remember how old I was, but it's probably in my early teens. Well, probably younger than that actually. Maybe like nine, 10, 11 years old, somewhere around in there. And was with a group of friends and the friends all wanted to like one by one stand up, basically have our own stand up show one by one stand up and tell a joke and then sit down and like someone else get up. And I got up to tell my joke and no one laughed. Not even a hint of laughter, no pity laughs, nothing. Like told my joke, it was totally silent. I wish I could remember what the joke was. And then the like shame of, I just said something that I thought was funny that nobody else found funny. I was like, I'm never telling a joke in front of people ever again. The irony is that I do a lot of speaking and I get up in front of people and I have YouTube and all this and I I do actually like incorporate humor into the things that I'm doing, but I don't like tell a joke joke. So part of me was like, maybe I should start incorporating that into these videos to get over my fear. And it's a one-sided video, so I don't know if you're going to laugh or not. It'd be a really safe space to practice my timing, but I didn't look up any jokes before this. So that's my own short-lived comedy experience, a sob story that eventually I'll get to in therapy but haven't yet that's it for today please like subscribe comment all of those things share etc we appreciate you and we'll see you next week